Hey everyone, I'm Charting Man Dan, mentor with the Chart Guys and trader for the last 13 years. In this video, we're going to check in on the broader market. And today, what stood out were Chinese stocks and Tesla. We'll see what's going on in those sectors, as well as what we're looking for this week with the FOMC and some big earnings reactions. Let's get to the charts. Hey everyone, so not a whole lot going on today. Again, the, the key for me was what the Chinese names were doing, some relative weakness in growth stocks, and some relative strength in Tesla. That's really what stood out to me today because everything else was uneventful. And we've got some earnings Wednesday. Tuesday, we got Google Wednesday, Meta and Microsoft. And then of course the FOMC on Wednesday as well. I'm gonna be traveling for a chart guys meetup in Colorado here on Wednesday. So going to be away from the usual schedule a bit, but perhaps we'll check in. So SPY daily is a potential bull flag. We know that the S&P 500 has remained extremely healthy because of the rotation going on. And while the NASDAQ pulled back last week, the financial sector and the healthcare sector kept running higher. And so here's SPY with a daily bull flag knocking on the door of 52-week highs and knocking on the door of the all-time high, which adjusted for the dividend is less than 3% away. So zero red flags whatsoever in the broader market. We would have to break 451.44 for the first tiny, small, pay attention red flag. That's it. NASDAQ is weaker. I started this morning watching for the potential of the NASDAQ to set a daily higher low and watching if that would mean daily consolidation in the other sectors because their rotation has been so on point that they're often inverse to each other and quickly realized that wasn't happening because the financial sector bulls showed up first thing. So I was keeping an eye out for a short in the financial sector and, you know, five, 10 minutes into the day, ditched that direction but the NASDAQ tomorrow is going to try and set this daily higher low. And if we do, the key from there will be, do we confirm a daily downtrend or not? And the earnings reactions of the major names I mentioned are going to dictate whether that shapes up or not. So still no major red flags. We are still looking for the daily higher low, but earnings will be significant. So Chinese names. And I knew to be watching Chinese names closely this week because of these tightening daily ranges. And that told me, you know, it's going to be make or break here this week. And I was on the verge. We had weakness in the first couple minutes of trading. You can see here on Baba. I mean, really the first, almost the first half hour. And I was on the verge. I've got a couple swings as I've been talking about. I've been looking for the Chinese sector to be the next laggard spot that we look for bulls to show up. And I was on the verge of, of you know, saying, okay, there's big red flags here and, and thinking about exiting some of those positions. And fortunately, the bulls showed up in the nick of time. And this was not just buying. This was automated buying that led to a short squeeze. And if you just look at this two-minute time frame, this is what I mean by automated buying. That's not natural price action. And, you know, you would think there'd be news behind that, but there wasn't a headline here. And if you look at, I mean, that's BABA. FXI is the largest Chinese ETF, one of the largest. KWeb. Chinese internet ETF, you're just seeing it everywhere. NIO, the EV names, not quite as extreme, but all bull. Leveraged ETF, Y-I-N-N, -N, straight up. And massive volume. FXI, you go to the daily time frame and you look at the volume. We had Friday's entire volume in the first, you know, very quickly after this move started. And you've got a bullish engulfing. You've got I mean, compared to Friday's volume, we've got three times Friday's volume. And so this is now the bulls making their move for the weekly uptrend to confirm. BABA has confirmed the weekly uptrend. FXI has not done so. We failed. We're trying again. And KWeb has not done so. We double topped and we're trying again. BABA did. So it's trying to follow through. And again, the reason I'm interested in Chinese names is because of the monthly inverse head and shoulders trying to shape up on all these charts. So one day, but massive volume. We're looking for back burners, five minute oversold conditions. We're looking for follow through. I need to see FXI break 29.25 and I wanna see KWeb break 30.17. Again, look at KWeb volume. I mean, on no news, we have the highest volume day of the year. That's obviously very telling. And so there was just a couple little support breaks. First thing, you know, FXI broke to the lowest level in two weeks by a couple pennies right before that move showed up. BABA broke 
to the lowest level in four days right before the bull showed up with huge volume. So definitely eye-grabbing. Eye NIO, tightening daily range, broke bull. These names have been leading the way. Again, we were looking at them as laggard growth names. NIO was a weekly falling wedge. It's been a really bullish six weeks here. XPEV, we were watching for the break of 1310 because of the lack of resistance here. XPEV was close to rolling over, double bottom to the penny, and saved by the bulls. Yet another one of those patterns where we have a resistance rejection into a bull flag, into a break. So encouraging and exciting for the Chinese sector bulls. And now we just need some follow through on these ETFs to break the weekly resistance. But a really good start to the week for that. Tesla. So Tesla broke the low of Friday first thing this morning, but then the relative strength became very clear. And we knew to be watching for a temporary earnings reaction bottom to be set. And really the key was this five minute consolidation, 945 to 950. We pull back for the five minute higher low. We confirm the five minute uptrend. That set the tone for the day, but it was QQQ. Look at QQQ during that point in time. 945 and 950, free fall to a new low of the day, dropping 1% from the high of the day. Tesla ignored it. That's relative strength. Pay attention to relative strength and relative weakness. It gives you clues and insight and definitely gave bulls increased confidence as this five minute uptrend continued to play out from there. And so now we do still need to confirm an hourly uptrend, but tons of space for the hourly higher low. And then the question will be, do bears confirm the daily downtrend or do bulls bounce 50% plus retracement and create the space for a daily higher low next consolidation. So clear shift, little bullish engulfing candle there as well. And hourly higher low will be the most likely result of next consolidation. Also watching Netflix to put in an earnings reaction bottom, but it struggled a little bit more. Look at this resistance from Friday that came into play. Top of the bounce Friday afternoon, 428.95. And the high of today rejected from that. Tightening range, little hourly inverse head and shoulders. So bulls tomorrow are going to be looking for Tesla to try and follow suit to get the daily bounce going. And again, same thing, plenty of space for a daily lower high. What's the bounce retracement size? Do bears confirm a daily downtrend or do we bounce for days to create the space for a higher low? So keeping an eye on Tesla and Netflix, very similar setups, Tesla a bit stronger. SMH, nothing going on today. Sideways Friday, we broke support today by some pennies, nothing going on. NVDA held while we broke the low of Friday by 60 cents on something that's a $400 stock. 60 cent break is a double bottom for me. So tomorrow the bulls need to shape up an hourly uptrend for a daily higher low to be set. And then again, same question. Do we confirm the daily downtrend, which we have not done in over a month, or can bulls set the higher low and keep heading back up to all time highs? ARKK is looking for a daily higher low. Same thing. Can bears confirm a daily downtrend after the next bounce? Blah, blah, blah. You get the idea. So that's key. We saw the weakness to end last week. Now do bears follow through with it after the next bounce? What does that show us if that happens psychologically in the markets? That shows us bulls buying the dip. Ah, weakness. All right, let's keep going. This has been working. Then we start the daily bounce. Then we run out of bulls buying the dip and the bears jump on it. And if we confirm the downtrend there, bulls that bought the dip stop out and bears get their first big win in the last two months. So that's going to be key. And the FOMC reaction is of course going to be a major factor there as well. Healthcare straight up for the last two weeks. But again, watching to see, does not a QQQ daily high or low mean XLV consolidation? We'll watch for first hourly oversold conditions. We'll watch for daily EMA 12 to try and hold. When we do top out, we know all time highs are in the conversation after the weekly equilibrium broke bull with huge follow through, but we're extended. It might be time to cool off. Same for the financial sector, still strong, but when we see daily consolidation, we're going to look for a higher low. Again, it's just a question of does the rotation game remain perfect when the NASDAQ bounces and these other sectors pull back playing that tag team action. KRE, regional banks, 
also staying strong. I'm in a swing position in KRE, a remaining partial position. I'm putting my stop at 46.10, under 46.10 at the moment. And for my ARKK remaining swing position, I will move up my stop when the new daily higher low is set. And if bears prove it, then I stop out. And a lot of bulls will do that as well. IWM, still de- healthy daily consolidation, but a very key resistance is being tested here. This double top on the long term, we're either going to reject into weekly consolidation, losing the daily uptrend, or break it. And the financial sector is going to have a significant impact here in the short term. But bulls in full control as long as the daily uptrend remains and as long as EMA 12 support remains. The dollar. Still keeping its bounce going. At this point, dollar bears are getting a bit concerned because this is a 50% plus bounce retracement almost. We're getting there. The four hour EMA 12 and uptrend is our guide. It is looking a little rising wedgy. So metals bulls are watching closely tomorrow to see if this is a rising wedge to, to shape up daily consolidation. And with this pullback, gold is a potential head and shoulders now on the daily. We know we will have to confirm a weekly uptrend eventually. Bulls were just hoping we would get another leg up first to make it really confident that a weekly higher low would be most likely. It's still possible if we top out here for the weekly uptrend to confirm, it's just less confident. And silver, daily EMA 12 support test, a lot more space for a weekly higher low. Have to confirm the weekly uptrend for longer term shifts to be taking place. But again, I, I don't like the size of this dollar bounce. I'm bullish the monthly chart for gold, but I've got my bear glasses on and I'm ensuring that the dollar bulls don't shift from here. It's, it's a tricky spot to be in because I'm looking for a dollar four month higher low off EMA 12. If that happens, gold bulls are probably not going to get all time highs. If we stay weak in the dollar and have not set the four month higher low, then I'm looking for gold monthly cup and handle. So the next few weeks are going to give us a lot of information in terms of probabilities. Paying close attention here. Oil, all bulls, very similar to NIO with the tightening daily range that broke bull. And now we're looking at monthly resistance of 81.44 as key resistance. Plenty of space for a weekly high or low whenever we consolidate next. Daily uptrend remains our guide. And again, just a similarity to NIO, tightening daily range into the bull break. One narrative that I'm keeping an eye on for the EV names is if oil does set the four month higher low that we're watching for, off EMA 12 and heads back up, you know, 85 plus, does increasing oil give a little tailwind to EV narrative? Natural gas, trying for a daily higher low. Bulls need to confirm the daily uptrend for the weekly bull flag to be in play. And lots of space for the daily higher low to try and form. If EMA 12 holds, it'll be a daily bull flag. Possibly. So again, overall, not a very eventful day. I did trade Tesla bullish a bit. I made a Tesla bear attempt that I stopped out of. It tested hourly resistance from Friday here and pulled back, sold partial, recognized the bull flag, sold, got down to a third, stop out, tiny win. But other than that, Chinese names and watching to see, can we get daily higher lows in the NASDAQ, in ARKK? Can Netflix join Tesla on its daily bounce? And then the bigger the bigger question from there is, do we confirm daily downtrends on the names that had weakness to end last week? We'll stay on top of it as always. Have a great rest of your day and don't forget to do good things.